Hi everyone, it's me Tina Amir and welcome to my channel. So our topic today is under the conversation of Monday, rent a house. But before I begin for this video, I'm just going to use informal pronunciation. So for those of you who still not clear yet, what is informal pronunciation? Please watch my number 53 video which is about confusing pronunciation. So our topic for today is under the conversational Malay topic, rent a house. If you haven't watched my video regarding the vocabs, please watch it first. And talking about rent a house under the conversational Malay topic. So normally for Malays, for people here, Malaysians in general, when we want to find a house to rent, we normally go to this website, mudah.my. However, please alert, there's also many scammers there. So before we begin our lesson, I'd like to share with you some lessons of life that I think will be beneficial for you if you know this. When you're searching for a house in that website, mudah.my, you don't be so eager to rent just by looking at the pictures. There are cases, they will show you nice looking house, who knows from what year, and then a very great deal, fully or partially furnished, and then you are so eager and you're super interested to see the house. Then they will say to you, they live in other state. So you need to book first and pay the booking fee. And then during the weekend, you're going to meet up with him or her in that house. You're so eager because it's just small money, right? For booking fee. And then you make the transaction. After that, they block you. So bye-bye house, something like that. Okay, that's the first case based on the real story. And now the second case, some even ask you to pay full. Or maybe meet up somewhere or maybe they don't. So it's either you already see them face to face or maybe you don't just contact through phone. So they will take advantage on your desperation because they know you want that kind of house badly. So once you give the money, they block you. So moral of the story here, you never ever hand in the money without you see the house and the house owner or the dealer. Sometimes house owner is not there, but it's the family member who involved. So the safest way always to go through agent, but of course it's a little bit pricey because there's always extra amount of money you need to pay. For me, I always like to bank in, so I have trees that I already give in the money. And of course, after you see the house. Okay, that one about finding a place to rent. Now homestay. Some people find homestay through Facebook. They just ask because it's common for people here to make a homestay business. So basically, you bank in the money. They give you the address and they say they give you the key, meet up somewhere. Or maybe they just leave the key in the post box at home. And imagine if you arrive in that place, you're from somewhere, some other parts of the state. And you arrive there maybe late night, heading to that house direction. And when you reach the place, it's actually other people's home. It's a family home living there. So they basically just give you wrong address. How to say it's not wrong address. It's not even their property. So they give other people's address for you to go there. The safest way here is you just go through Airbnb. We reviews, of course. And if not, if you still want to go through Facebook, make sure there's a page and reviews before you decide to stay there. Okay, enough of that topic. Now we're gonna start our lesson. And basically for this conversation on Monday, rent a house is the conversation between the future tenant with the house owner. And why I take the house owner for the example here? Because it's easy for you to bargain. So we will see more examples. Because if we agent, there's clear cut black and white. So not much for me to explain. Okay, we start. The future tenant said to the house owner, Normally, if you came across the advertisement on Moda, so you will make a phone call. So, this future tenant called the house owner. Assalamualaikum. Nama saya Ali. Saya nak cakap dengan Encik Hadi. Assalamualaikum. Nama saya Ali. Saya nak cakap dengan Encik Hadi. Please be upon you. My name is Ali. I want to speak with Mr. Hadi. So you will say Assalamualaikum if you Muslim and you normally contact the Muslim guy. So, so basically Malay, you know it's Muslim because the culture is like that here. Yeah. So if you non-Muslim, you don't bother to say Assalamualaikum to the house owner because it's not our culture here. 
But of course, it's not a big deal in some other parts of the country. But in our culture, it's not like that. Okay, house owner. Waalaikumsalam. Ya, saya ada apa ya? Waalaikumsalam. Ya, saya ada apa ya? So, it means peace be upon you. Yes, it's me. What's the matter? He will either say ada apa ya? Or he also may ask, Boleh saya tahu untuk apa? Boleh saya tahu untuk apa? Boleh saya tahu untuk apa? Or, boleh saya tahu kenapa? Boleh saya tahu kenapa? So, it means me, I know why. And then you as a future tenant, you explain. Saya ada ternampak iklan rumah encik dan saya berminat nak tanya sikit pasal rumah tu. Saya ada ternampak iklan rumah encik dan saya berminat nak tanya sikit pasal rumah tu. Saya ada ternampak Iklan rumah encik dan saya berminat nak tanya sikit pasal rumah tu. So it means I came across your advertisement regarding your house and I'm interested to ask a little bit about that house. So you mentioned here nak tanya sikit. So basically in Malay culture, even you ask lots of questions, you still mention the word sikit. And then house owner reply to you, iklan rumah dekat mana ya? Rumah yang mana? Iklan rumah dekat mana ya? Rumah yang mana? So, in case he has many houses advertised, he basically curious which house where you find the advertisement. So, where did you see the advertisement about the house and which house? So, now it's time for you to specify what you see. Saya nampak rumah dua tingkat kat Sepang. Iklan kat mudah dok mind. Or you just mention the word mudah. People here normally just say like that. Saya nampak rumah dua tingkat kat Sepang. Iklan kat mudah. Saya nampak rumah dua tingkat kat Sepang. Iklan kat mudah. So basically, I give example Sepang in Selangor. I saw in the advertisement in mudah, two-story house in Sepang. And then house owner was like, oh yes. Oh yeah. And then you ask, masih kosong lagi ke rumah tu? Masih kosong lagi ke rumah tu? Masih kosong lagi ke rumah tu? Or you may also ask, rumah tu kosong lagi ke? Rumah tu kosong lagi ke? So it means is that house still vacant? The house owner will say, maybe he will say, yes, ya, yeah, masih kosong. Belum ada siapa-siapa tanya. Ya, yeah, masih kosong. Belum ada siapa-siapa tanya. Or, Ya, masih kosong. Belum ada sesiapa tanya. Ya, masih kosong. Belum ada sesiapa tanya. Or, may also just say. Ya, masih kosong. Belum ada siapa tanya. Ya, masih kosong. Belum ada siapa tanya. Ya, yes, still vacant. No one ask yet. And then you as a future tenant, you will ask. Berapa ya harga sewa rumah tu sebulan? Berapa ya harga sewa rumah tu sebulan? Or even without harga, berapa ya sewa rumah tu sebulan? Berapa ya sewa rumah tu sebulan? Even it's mentioned there in the advertisement, normally our people like to ask to confirm. Okay, so it means here, how much is the rental price for that house monthly? Then house owner said, 16. So it's understandable here, it's 1,600, not 160. So, it's a house, right? And two stories in Selangor. So, it's normal for this kind of price. Satu enam. So, it's understandable. You're talking about thousand ringgit. Thousand and six hundred. Or, some people also mention like this. Seribu enam ratus. Seribu enam ratus. And if it's a guarded area, then you as a future tenants, you need to ask. Termasuk maintenance ke? Just to confirm. Normally, it's included. But for any case, you may ask. Termasuk maintenance ke? Termasuk maintenance ke? Is it included maintenance? So, house owner will say, Ya, yeah, termasuk sekali. Ya, yeah, termasuk sekali. Ya, yeah, termasuk sekali. Yes, included at once. And then, this is so Malay, you like to bargain. Normally, you don't just accept the price that it is. Our people like to reduce the price. They will try somehow. If it's possible. So, Harga sewa tu boleh kurang lagi tak? Harga sewa tu boleh kurang lagi tak? Harga sewa tu boleh kurang lagi tak? So, is it possible to reduce the rental price? So, house owner will say, tak boleh. 
Okay, that's normally intonation if it's cannot. Tak boleh, cannot. Okay, dah murah dah tu. Dah murah dah tu. Tak boleh, dah murah dah tu. You know, it's already cheap. Or maybe they will reduce it for you a little bit. Boleh, satu lima boleh. Satu lima boleh. Or boleh, seribu lima ratus boleh. Boleh, seribu lima ratus boleh. Yes, can. A thousand five hundred, is it okay? And then you as a future tenant not satisfied, so you ask for more reduction. Kalau seribu tiga ratus dapat tak? Kalau seribu tiga ratus dapat tak? Kalau seribu tiga ratus dapat tak? So normally, also they will say something like this. Kalau seribu tiga dapat tak? Kalau seribu tiga dapat tak? Oh, kalau satu tiga dapat tak? Okay, that's the way how our people normally say numbers. Sebab bajet saya banyak tu je. Sebab bajet saya banyak tu je. Sebab bajet saya banyak tu je. So it means, can I get it for 1,300? Because that's how much is my budget. And then, the house owner said, tak boleh lah macam tu. Kalau 1,400 tak apa. Tak boleh lah macam tu. Kalau 1,400 tak apa. Oh, tak boleh lah macam tu. Kalau 1,400 tak apa. Tak boleh lah macam tu kalau satu empat tak apa. Oh. Tak boleh lah macam tu kalau seribu empat tak apa. Tak boleh lah macam tu kalau seribu empat tak apa. So it means cannot like that. If it's a thousand four hundred then it's okay. So basically our mentality here when we give you the lowest price possible that doesn't mean we want that lowest price. If we get it then it's our bonus. But normally we want to have something in between which we think maybe is possible and logical a bit. So that is the price maybe you will offer. That is the price exactly we want. We just try our luck. That's why some people really ask for low price. So if you doing business here, if you're trying to sell something and somebody come up to you, offer their lowest possible price and you don't get offended, you will like increase the price higher a bit and you offer them. Is it okay like this? So they normally like that way. And then the house owner, if he agree with that lowest possible price, then he will say, Boleh lah seribu tiga pun. Boleh lah seribu tiga pun. Oh, boleh lah seribu tiga ratus pun. Boleh lah seribu tiga ratus pun. So it means yes, a thousand three hundred also you can get. Then future tenant will ask, Deposit pula berapa ringgit? Deposit pula berapa ringgit? Oh, you don't need to mention the ringgit because it's understandable. Deposit pula berapa? Deposit pula berapa? Oh, berapa pula deposit? Berapa pula deposit? Oh, berapa ringgit pula deposit? It means how much is the deposit? So house owner will say dua bulan deposit, maintenance sapi air tambah lagi enam ratus. Dua bulan deposit. Maintenance, api air tambah lagi 600. So it means 2 months deposit for maintenance, electricity, water bill at more 600. So the word api is fire. So electricity here, people don't really say that word. Electricity, electric. People will say api. Api. So you know they're talking about electricity. So maintenance, we prefer to use English word compared to our own word. So this is the bonus here if you're dealing directly to the house owner. So you as a future tenant, you may ask, boleh tak bayar ansur-ansur? So if you're really tight with budget, then you can ask, boleh tak bayar ansur-ansur? Boleh tak bayar ansur-ansur? So it means can I pay in installment? Don't be surprised some house owner accept that. Or you may also say like this, boleh tak bayar sikit-sikit? Boleh tak bayar sikit-sikit? Boleh tak bayar sikit-sikit? So it means can I pay little by little? So if really cannot, then house owner will say, Maaf or sorry, tak boleh. Sorry, you cannot. Maaf, tak boleh. Normally they say, sorry, tak boleh. Or if they are like tolerate a bit, then they say, Boleh tapi bila last nak bayar? Boleh tapi bila last nak bayar? Boleh, tapi bila last nak bayar. They like wanted to be tolerate but with certain condition. Yes, you can but when is your last date to pay? So you future tenant, you will say, saya langsai, 
Oh, saya langsaikan dalam dua bulan lagi boleh. Saya langsai. Oh, saya langsaikan dalam dua bulan lagi boleh. Saya langsai. Oh, saya langsaikan dalam dua bulan lagi boleh. So, langsai, langsaikan here, the word we use for that. So, I'll settle it within two months. Is it okay? And one thing you need to bear in mind, if you have too much request, maybe that house owner, that person reluctant to rent it to you because they're afraid you might not pay the rent on time. Maybe you always in a financial difficulty and they don't trust you that much. Anyway, for this house owner, he said, paling lewat pun saya bagi masa dalam sebulan. Paling lewat pun, saya bagi masa dalam sebulan. Oh, paling lambat pun, saya bagi masa dalam sebulan. Paling lambat pun, saya bagi masa dalam sebulan. So, it means I give you no later than within one month. Another advantage you deal with house owner, kalau deposit sebulan je boleh tak? Kalau deposit sebulan je boleh tak? Kalau deposit sebulan je boleh tak? So it means it's okay if I give you deposit for one month only. Or some house owner don't mind. So they say to you, boleh je sebab nanti dapat semula juga. Boleh je sebab nanti dapat semula juga. Boleh je sebab nanti dapat semula juga. So it means yes, you may because later you will get it back. And then bonus question, house owner like to ask. People here, whenever you rent a house, they prefer you a government servant because there's always fixed salary, something like that. So they think it's a guarantee for them to get the rental money on time. But of course, depends also the situation, your situation. House owner asks, Encik Ali kerja apa ya? Encik Ali kerja apa ya? Oh, Encik Ali kerja apa? Swasta ke kerajaan? Swasta ke kerajaan? Swasta ke kerajaan? Mr. Ali, what is your job? Private or government? Then you mention, kerja bahagian sales dekat syarikat swasta. Kerja bahagian sales dekat syarikat swasta. So it means I work in sales department in private company. And then they will ask you another question. For some of you, this might seem like privacy question. They anyway will ask you, gaji tetap tak? Gaji tetap tak? Oh, pendapatan tetap tak? Pendapatan tetap tak? So, is it fixed monthly salary? So, you will say tetap, tetap fixed. Or if you want to say fixed, then you say tak tetap, tak tetap. When you mention you work in private sector, it's already worried the house owner. Normally, not necessary. So, this house owner will ask, boleh bayar tak bulan-bulan on time? Boleh bayar tak bulan-bulan on time? Or boleh bayar on time tak bulan-bulan? Boleh bayar on time tak bulan-bulan? Or boleh bayar on time tak setiap bulan? Boleh bayar on time tak setiap bulan? So it means can you pay the rent monthly on time? So you say boleh. Yes, I may. So house owner don't want to offend you. So he or she will be honest. Saya bukan apa sebab rumah ni ada hutang lagi dengan bank. Jadi saya perlu orang yang mampu untuk sewa. Saya bukan apa sebab rumah ni ada hutang lagi dengan bank. Jadi saya perlu orang yang mampu untuk sewa. Saya bukan apa sebab rumah ni ada hutang lagi dengan bank. Jadi saya perlu orang yang mampu untuk sewa. So it means I don't mean anything bad. Saya bukan apa. If you heard Malay say something like this, saya bukan apa. You cannot direct translate. What is it? I'm not what. I don't mean anything bad. That's actually the meaning. I still in debt with the bank for this house. So I really need someone that can afford to pay the rent. Then you have to convince him. Saya faham, saya boleh bayar bulan-bulan, tak ada masalah. Saya faham, saya boleh bayar bulan-bulan, tak ada masalah. Saya faham, saya boleh bayar bulan-bulan, tak ada masalah. So it means I understand, I can pay monthly, no problem. Then house owner say, kalau macam tu baguslah. Kalau macam tu, baguslah. Kalau macam tu, baguslah. If that's so, great. Okay, you may ask question even though they stated that in the advertisement. Like I said to confirm. Because sometimes house owner, they took picture of their house and upload it online. But it's actually empty house. It's not fully furnished. They took the picture when there was a tenant previously. And then they forgot to mention it's uh, actually not fully finished. 
you have the right to us to just to be sure. Rumah ni fully furnished ke? Rumah ni fully furnished ke? Or if you want to ask in Malay, but normally people use the word fully furnished. But in case if you want to ask in Malay, rumah ni ada semua perabot lengkap ke? Rumah ni ada semua perabot lengkap ke? Rumah ni ada semua perabot lengkap ke? Is this house fully furnished? So, we just use the word fully furnished anyway. Then house owner say, Ya, hampir lengkap kecuali tak ada TV dan mesin basuh. Ya, hampir lengkap kecuali tak ada TV dan mesin basuh. Ya, hampir lengkap kecuali tak ada TV dan mesin basuh. So, it means, yes, almost fully furnished except don't have TV and washing machine. And then you ask again, semua tingkap dengan pintu ada grill ke? Semua tingkap dengan pintu ada grill ke? Semua tingkap dengan pintu ada grill ke? So, it means, do all windows and doors grill? And then house owner will say, ya ada, ya ada. Yes, they all have. Oh, ya semua ada, ya semua ada. Okay, now you may ask about aircon. Aircon elok ke bila lah servis? Aircon elok ke bila lah servis? So it means uh, air conditioner still good. When was the last time air conditioners were serviced? And house owner will say, elok baru je servis. Elok baru je servis. Elo baru je service. So, it's good just service. Then you ask again because you want to make sure everything fully functional in the house. Pipe air, suis, okay ke semua? Pipe air, suis, okay ke semua? Pipe air, suis, okay ke semua? So, it means water pipe, switches, everything okay? He will convince you. Okay, lo. Okay, good. This also important question you have to ask. Katakan nanti bila saya dah pindah rumah Encik, lepas tu ada kerosakan. Saya kena cakna sendiri atau Encik yang akan uruskan. Katakan nanti bila saya dah pindah rumah Encik, lepas tu ada kerosakan. Saya kena cakna sendiri ke oh, atau Encik yang akan uruskan. Katakan nanti bila saya dah pindah rumah Encik, lepas tu ada kerosakan. Saya kena cakna sendiri ke atau encik yang akan uruskan. So it means let's say when I move into your house after that there's damage, I have to take care of my own or you will deal with it. So normally if you live in a guarded area, they will have technician or a handyman to fix things for you. Let's say if you are not for this case, so this is how you ask. And this house owner say to you, bagi tahu saya nanti saya uruskan. Bagi tahu saya nanti saya uruskan. Bagi tahu saya, nanti saya uruskan. So, let me know, I'll deal with it. And then, you ask again, rumah boleh deko tak? Macam nak cat ke, pasang wallpaper ke? Rumah boleh deko tak? Oh, rumah boleh hias tak? Macam nak cat ke, pasang wallpaper ke? So, it means, can I decorate the house like painting or put up wallpaper? So, house owner will say, boleh deko, boleh hias rumah tapi tak boleh cat. Tak boleh pasang wallpaper, tak boleh tebuk lubang, boleh deko, oh, boleh hias rumah, tapi tak boleh cat, tak boleh pasang wallpaper, tak boleh tebuk lubang. Can decorate the house but cannot paint or put up wallpaper, cannot make a home. Next, future China will ask, berapa hari bulan kena bayar sewa? Berapa hari bulan kena bayar sewa? Berapa hari bulan kena bayar sewa? So it means, what is the date for rent need to be paid? So some people like very specific when it comes to this but some people don't mind that much. For example, this house owner, dalam tempoh masa 20 hingga 30 hari bulan. Dalam tempoh masa 20 hingga 30 hari bulan. So in the duration of 20 to 30. And then, house owner will ask you, Encik Ali nak sewa dengan kawan-kawan ke keluarga? Encik Ali nak sewa dengan kawan-kawan ke keluarga? Encik Ali nak sewa dengan kawan-kawan ke keluarga? So, this is kind of important question from house owner because they have how many numbers of people should be in the house. Some people don't even like if you have too many children, they afraid you will ruin the house. Or some people don't even like you have too many friends inside of the house. So, it means you want to rent it with friends or family. So, you say dengan keluarga saya orang rumah or isteri Lima orang anak. Dengan keluarga, saya orang rumah atau isteri, lima orang anak. Dengan keluarga, saya orang rumah atau isteri, 
lima orang anak. So it means with my family, my wife and my five children. So the orang rumah here is actually refer to the wife. So if you direct translate people of the house. Uh, some people say orang rumah if the wife is housewife. But in most cases, not really. When they mention orang rumah, it's actually just refer to the wife. Then you ask again. Rumah ni ada berapa bilik ya? Rumah ni ada berapa bilik ya? Rumah ni ada berapa bilik ya? So how many rooms this house has? I'm going to say ada empat bilik. Dua bilik air. Satu bilik air dalam master bedroom. Ada empat bilik. Dua bilik air. Satu bilik air dalam master bedroom. Ada empat bilik. Dua bilik air. Satu bilik air dalam master bedroom. So it has four rooms, two bathroom, and one bathroom is actually in the master bedroom. Okay, next is regarding the question about bed. This is something very important for you to ask. You don't want any problem arise in the future. So you as a future tenant, if you keep a cat, then you ask. Boleh bela kucing tak? Boleh bela kucing tak? Boleh bela kucing tak? Can I keep a cat? In Malay, boleh bela kucing tak? It doesn't specify how many kucing or how many cats you have. But in English, if you see how, can I keep cats? Okay, that's already proven. Can I keep a cat? So in Malay, when you mention boleh bela kucing tak? So people will ask, is it one or two or more? How so you say? Boleh kalau tak banyak. Sebab tak nak nanti jiran-jiran komplain rumah berbau dengan bising. Banyak ke kucingnya? Boleh kalau tak banyak sebab tak nak nanti jiran-jiran komplain rumah berbau dengan bising. Banyak ke kucingnya? Boleh kalau tak banyak sebab tak nak nanti jiran-jiran komplain rumah berbau dengan bising. Banyak ke kucingnya? So it means yes, you can it if it's not too much. Because I don't want neighbors to complain about smelly house and noise. You have many cats? Then you mention, saya ada satu je kucing. Saya ada satu je kucing. I have only one cat. So, how's on the set? Kalau macam tu tak apalah. Kalau macam tu tak apalah. Kalau macam tu tak apalah. If that's so, never mind. How's on the ask again? Nak duduk lama ke? Nak duduk lama ke? Do you want to stay long? Plan macam tu lah. Plan macam tu lah. Oh, rancangnya macam tu lah. Rancang macam tu lah. I plan so. And then, how's on the will say to you? Rumah ni ada kontrak, paling kurang kena duduk setahun. Rumah ni ada kontrak, paling kurang kena duduk setahun. Rumah ni ada kontrak, paling kurang kena duduk setahun. So when you mention about contract here, if it's not through the agent, normally they have just um, nothing serious contract. That's just basically the rules they set up by themselves. Nothing involve other party. So to rent this house, you will be tied with contract. At least you have to stay a year. Even though it's not true the other party and it's just a regular contract, nothing serious. But if you doesn't obey to that, then they have the right not to give you your deposit. So make sure you agree to the term before you agree to move in. So future tenant said, plannya nak duduk beberapa tahun juga. Plannya nak duduk beberapa tahun juga. Oh, rancangnya nak duduk beberapa tahun juga. Rancangnya nak duduk beberapa tahun juga. So it means I plan to stay for few years too. And then house owner ask, bila nak pindah masuk rumahnya? Bila nak pindah masuk rumahnya? Bila nak pindah masuk rumahnya? Or even without the word pindah, bila nak masuk rumahnya? Bila nak masuk rumahnya? So it means when you want to move in. So you say awal bulan, satu hari bulan ni boleh ke? Or boleh tak? That's also you may ask like that. Awal bulan, satu hari bulan ni, boleh ke or boleh tak? Early this month, first day of the month, is it possible? So, how's on your set? Boleh nak tengok rumahnya bila? Boleh nak tengok rumahnya bila? Oh, boleh bila nak tengok rumahnya? Boleh bila nak tengok rumahnya? Yes, you may when you want to see the house. And then you say, minggu depan boleh? Oh, minggu depan boleh tak? Hari Selasa, kalau semua okey, saya terus bayar dan dapatkan kunci. Minggu depan boleh? Oh, minggu depan boleh tak? Hari Selasa, kalau semua okey, saya terus bayar dan dapatkan kunci. So, it means can I see next week, Tuesday, if it's everything's okay, I pay immediately and get the key. And house owner say, boleh tak ada masalah. Yes, you may, no problem. 
some house owner don't like you stay for a long time without pay first so they won't allow it then they will say kunci boleh dapat tujuh hari sebelum masuk rumah tapi tak apa boleh bayar dulu atau bayar sebelum nak dapatkan kunci kunci boleh dapat tujuh hari sebelum masuk rumah tapi tak apa boleh bayar dulu atau bayar sebelum nak dapatkan kunci kunci boleh dapat tujuh hari sebelum masuk rumah tapi tak apa boleh bayar dulu atau bayar sebelum nak dapatkan kunci. So it means you may get the key seven days before you enter the house. But never mind, you may pay first or pay before you want to get the key. And then house owner remind him, minggu depan hari Selasa jangan lupa bagi tahu saya pukul berapa hari sebelumnya. Minggu depan hari Selasa jangan lupa bagi tahu saya pukul berapa hari sebelumnya. Minggu depan, hari Selasa, jangan lupa bagi tahu saya pukul berapa hari sebelumnya. So it means next week, Tuesday, don't forget to let me know the time the day before. Then you say, boleh nanti saya bagi tahu. Boleh nanti saya bagi tahu. Yes, I let you know. So nanti here doesn't mean nanti straight away on that day. It means nanti-nanti, you know, sometime in the future also nanti. And then to end the conversation, you say, saya rasa setakat ni je kot saya nak tanya. Saya rasa setakat ni je kot saya nak tanya. Saya rasa setakat ni je kot saya nak tanya. Oh, you may also say. Saya rasa setakat ni je kot soalan saya. Saya rasa setakat ni je kot soalan saya. Terima kasih ya Encik. Don't forget to say thank you. So it means in English, I think that's all I want to ask. Saya rasa setakat ni je kot saya nak tanya. I think that's all my question. Saya rasa setakat ni je kot soalan saya. Then house owner will also say, Sama-sama. You're welcome. Well, I guess that's all the lesson for now. Thank you very much for watching and to meet again. Bye.